landscape of air travel has changed dramatically since the first scheduled commercial flight took off in January of 1914. In that first year of planned flights, a whopping 1,205 passengers climbed aboard commercial aircraft. Americans soon fell in love with the idea of air travel, leading to a boom in the numbers of commercial flights. From 3 million in 1940 to 55 million in 1956 to well over 600 million today. And this number is only expected to increase in the next decade. By some estimates, there could be over 1 billion passengers in the air in the very near future. But with this increased number of flights, pressure is beginning to build on our already overburdened air infrastructure. Long lines, delayed flights, safety concerns, and a host of other issues have changed the once glamorous dream of flight into a nightmare for many flyers. With this increased number of passenger flights crowding into an already clogged airspace, it's plain to see that today's aviation system cannot meet 21st century needs. To address this problem, a unique governmental and commercial plan is being developed to create the Next Generation Air Transportation System, or NGATS. Designed by the Joint Planning and Development Office, or JPDO, this collaborative team has developed a multi-stage approach to transform the ailing aviation system. To help us understand what the JPDO hopes to accomplish, I spoke with Dr. Sherry Borner at the National Air and Space Museum's Stephen F. Udvarhazy Center near Washington Dulles International Airport to find out more. Well, the NGATS is the next generation air transportation system. It's our vision for how the future of aviation and, and the delivery of aviation services in the country will be. So it includes everything from the changes in the airplanes that you see around you here, sure. the way that air traffic control will be handled, even the way passengers will be processed in terminals and the kind of information that will be available to them while they're waiting for their flights or trying to find their baggage. The people who are involved in the Joint Planning and Development Office are doing their best to make the experience of actually flying pleasant. But not only that, they want to make it possible for many, many more people to take advantage of the system. We really want the system to be very predictable and reliable because it is the backbone of so much of what the country does. The aviation system really contributes to every part of American life, so it shouldn't be a pain in, in, in that way. It should be something that's really enhancing. Um, so we're trying to deal with the airport problem, we're trying to deal with the throughput problem, but we're also trying to deal with the problems that aviation causes as a result of you know, emissions and noise. So a lot of NASA's research is actually aimed at making engines more efficient so they make fewer pollutants and they're less damaging and the noise footprint from the um, aircraft is minimized so people can live near the airport like they do here at Dulles. The final thing is that we want to be able to accommodate anybody's way of doing business or wanting to use the system. So that means we have to have all kinds of partners because they need to work together. They all affect the aviation system. So the FAA and NASA are involved, but also the Department of Homeland Security, the Department of Commerce, and even the Department of Defense. So what's the problem with today's system? Well, it's not that the system has problems. In fact, it's that the system is very good and people want to use the system so much that we're running out of capacity. So if we keep doing things the way we do them now, which are very safe, we will not be able to continue to grow at the rate that people want us to. And we would like to be able to give everybody the opportunity to fly the way that they do now. If they want to go home for Thanksgiving and they want to take 25 people with them, they should be able to do it. So we have to change. When do you think this change will occur? Oh wow, things are changing right now. Um, the controllers, a large number of them are near retirement. So the way that the controllers do their jobs is going to change very, very soon. In addition to that, there's a movement afoot to change the way that we handle fuel burn and um, emissions so that we'll be able to operate in a lot of smaller airports, make a lot less noise. So if, if you looked at the changes that will happen, they will be continuous between now and 2025. All the partners in the JPDO want this system to be different, and this is the perfect time for us to be making the change. So many different things are going to happen anyway, that this is the moment to make the system exactly the way we would like it to be instead of putting in a patch here and there to make it go along five or six more years. So everybody in the JPDO has really put their hearts into developing the best approach so that we can actually deliver the goods at the end of the day.